Yeah, America is just unique in, in how uh, dominated we are by the whole corporate and chemical industry. And it, it's simply outrageous. And we have one of the worst health, we, we, our health is much worse than most other countries in the world. Even though we're supposed to have the best health care in the world, we have the worst health in the world and it's really gone down. So they're using far more pesticides. They don't know what these pesticides really do and they don't know what they do when they're used with other pesticides. Even, even Roundup. You know, glyphosate was tested, Roundup, which has other things in it, wasn't tested. I mean, it's outrageous. And that's why I said the chilling words were, the pesticide industry bought the seed industry. And one of the things um, I'm doing now is I'm, I'm working on a series uh, about 24 of the pioneering organic farmers in the United States and Canada. And when those people started growing organically back in the 60s and 70s, they went to state universities to find out what you know, how to get some advice about how to grow. And every single one of them was told, you can't grow commercially organically, give up. It'll never happen. You can't do it. And they all went ahead and did it. And now it's a, the most fastest growing segment of the, of the food industry. And people want organic. So there was no help for them, none. And there still, there still isn't, basically, when you look at it. But that's, again, I was talking about ground up, you know, where citizens want it, consumers want it. And that's why, you know, Whole Foods is so popular and all these, you know, that, that's, that's why people want those industries. But it's, it's nothing, the government is very much controlled by the corporate, by the chemical industry and the agriculture industry. But you really don't, you don't need all these chemicals. Look at Europeans are much healthier than Americans. They, they eat, no one's starving. There's mo more food in the world now, there's food enough in the world now for 14 billion people. The idea that we need GMOs to feed the world is ludicrous. There are more obese people in the world than there are starving people. So this is all, it's like a, a, a guilt thing. But it, it's true, and it's something that people, but even though I was saying earlier, even if you eat organically, just going around in your life, you will be exposed to Roundup. You'll, they'll find it, probably find it in your urine. We don't know what that does to us. It hasn't been properly tested. Roundup wasn't tested. Glyphosate was tested, and the testing really wasn't even good testing. So it's just, <coughs> it's just shocking. It's shocking, and so I think that um, I don't know. You know, it's, I've been dealing with this for almost 20 years, and it's very... I'm going to skip over this because we've got... running a little out of time. But here we go. This is, uh, this is American attitude towards testing. This is a cartoon from the Union of Concerned Scientists. We engineered it so it's resistant to the most annoying pests, the independent scientists who are actually doing the testing. And they vilify those people, absolutely vilify them. And then they come back and they do the studies again and again and again. Um, so let's, let's talk about feeding the world here. One of the problems that the biotechnology industry has is that it's done nothing for the American consumer. There's nothing there. There's no genetically engineered food that does anything, that, no, no more nutrition, no, nothing for us. So how are they going to sell this technology to the American people? Well, they've come up with this idea that maybe biotechnology should be sold as the way to feed a starving world. With world population expected to increase by 2 billion people in the next 30 years, biotechnology could provide an important way to produce enough food... One major problem with that, the reason why about 800 million people starve every day, and that is a tragic fact, has nothing to do with the amount of food available. Most of these people around the world who were starving used to be farmers. But because of the World Bank and the National Monetary Fund giving huge loans to these countries, these countries could no longer allow for subsistence farming. They had to grow expensive export crops back to the first world to pay back those loans. So they kicked all these hundreds of millions of farmers off their farms. They end up in the Bhopals and the Mexico cities and the Brasilias of the world without money. They no longer are growing their own food and they're competing for the scarce jobs available in the new industrialization of these countries. They are no longer food independent. They're food dependent. Amartya Sen, a Pulitzer Prize winning economist after a decade of work, pointed out again and again that the problem of hunger is not a production problem, it's an access problem. It's getting entitlement to food, not producing food, that's the problem.
we're in fact overproducing the major commodities to the extent where farmers can't recover their production costs. And so we have huge subsidies. You know, we have 800 million people on this planet right now who are malnourished in an, in an era of overproduction where, where farmers can't recover their, their production costs. When wealthy countries subsidize their crops, they undercut the markets of developing countries. In 1994, on Christmas Eve, by the way, for the first time we said, you know what, we're going to try and have international rules on patenting. This was driven, of course, by the United States. And here's what's behind it. If you have gone into a third world country and you've patented a plant or a tree, the United States wants to be able to go back to that country and say, no one in this country, even though this plant originated here, can use it without paying us the patent fee. To do that, they've got to harmonize patent laws around the world. That's really the big prize for the corporations. It's one thing to make sure we're controlling the U.S. market, but if we can take these plants that we've gotten from the third world and make sure that no one in the third world can use them without paying the companies that patent fee, that's the big bonanza for the corporations. The generalized perception in Latin America, I also think in Mexico and many other parts of the world also, the new unipolar system has benefited the United States more than it has benefited the minorities of impoverished countries of the world. This is an issue of big concern because there are not so many political alternatives around. We may eventually go back to despotic types of rule that I don't think will, will have in any way to make countries like Latin America or Africa or Asia progress. We really need compassion for the people in the world that have less. The resistance to globalization is that it stems from the, the insights of some people that, you know, the corporations, they want to be able to go in and make the money, but they don't want responsibility when things don't work out. 